Brent. Ben. Do you know what my favorite thing to eat is for breakfast? Lucky Charms. Do you know what my second favorite thing to eat for breakfast is? Bacon. It is bacon. God, you are good. Wow. Prime time. We're going to go over three types of bacon. Everybody's familiar with the traditional belly bacon. It's amazing. But the question is, what else can we do? We're going to make a jowl bacon from uh, the head. And we're also going to make a Canadian bacon because we don't know what's happening in Canada. This is from one animal. You can get numerous kinds of bacon. These are the three we want to do because right now we do the belly bacon and we sell it like it's going out of style. We don't always have Canadian bacon or jowl bacon, but we want to make them more regular part of the shop and what we sell. So we're going to mess with those and see if we can uh, make them really tasty for you. Bacon time. We have the whole pork loin here. This rib section is what we're gonna cut into chops. I'm just gonna take the loin end off right here. Ben, do you know why it's called Canadian bacon? As far as my research has told me, it's only called Canadian bacon in the US where we identify it as being from Canada. So it must be right. Yes. It's just commonly known as either just bacon or back bacon. This is the same bacon that you would get if you had Irish breakfast and English breakfast. There's a lot more protein to it and less fat. It's kind of almost the inverted belly. Here we go. Boom. Next we have a belly. May I do the belly? A uh, please. Ooh. Just gonna cut a nice piece here. We got that off. We don't need to do anything else to cure this. That's it. We just need to get the, the skin off. Every other bit of this is gonna be delicious, so don't trim it, don't touch it, leave it as is. I mean, you can also see already, cool, that looks like bacon. The gel, you might have heard as guanciale. That is cured pork gel, which is often used in pastas. So this will be like kind of our lo-fi American way of doing a guanciale. A lot of the fat and the richness from the fat is still gonna shine through. It'll still be great for pasta, I think. What we're peeling back right here is the actual cheek. This is where you almost want to hear like a chorus of angels. That's how good the fat is when it's even slightly cured. Pork jowl is the whole cheek muscle. This lean section is the actual cheek. We have our jowls, belly, loin trimmed, ready to go. I got a big bucket of salt and brown sugar downstairs. I just like to have one around. Getting into the curing process. Yes. Ben, get to it. This is a dry cure. All we're doing is applying salt, brown sugar, and pink salt. Salt enters the cell walls to actually stabilize the meat. What that is doing is killing microbes. So eating raw bacon, totally fine. No microbes, no death. Because cell walls are breaking down and we're replacing protein, which is mostly water, with salt, it's going to leach out some water and or blood. Salt is performing all of these essential functions. Ben, why do we got that sugar in there? A little bit of sweetness, a little bit of saltiness, a little bit of smokiness, and a little bit of fat. I mean, these are the basic principles of making something taste good. Any bacon that you're buying commercially from a grocery store is done either through a tumble or through a brine. It happens a lot faster, but that's a lot of water content that you get into your bacon. Whenever you fry it up and it's a big slice that ends up being a little tiny slice, that's because it's all water content that you're being sold. That's water content that you're losing whenever you're cooking it and you end up with mediocre bacon. We're gonna seal this up and uh, we're gonna let it hang out for, for seven days. Oh. Yeah. What day is it? It's been seven days, Ben. It's time to smoke the bacon. Okay. Let's do it. Yep, got it. Yep. Doing great. Doing oh. great. All right. All right, let's do this. We got our three bacons. We got our loin. We got our belly. We got our jowls. A little bit of cure on the fat, which isn't uncommon. Fat doesn't take cure as well as protein does. 
This is the water that the bacon has purged. Get rid of it, it's gross. Yep. Um, but just wanna show you that it is going to purge some liquid. That is the curing process. Um, I got the smoker ready to go. Load it up. Yeah, let's go, smoke it. The art of smoking. Oh, it's an art now. Ooh. Oh, so fancy. Yes, exactly. In smoking, you wanna get your smoker to a temperature 160, 180, where the wood is actually going to create smoke. You don't wanna get it so hot so that it's actually just roasting it like an oven. So we wanna create the smoke, but we wanna be cooking at a really low level so that we don't actually just cook the outside and uh, leave the inside to like a medium rare. All right, let's do this thing. And that is what that is supposed to look like. That is gorgeous. Absolutely perfect. Yeah, they could not look more beautiful. This is fantastic. It's cooked all the way through, cured all the way through. Ben, you wanna eat some bacon? Yeah, I was hoping to eat a giant bacon steak today. You look thin. Yeah, thanks. Let's go. So let's do the belly bacon in the oven. I think it does really well in there and it stays flat. It doesn't curl up on us. So it's a real nice even cook. I've never grilled Canadian or back bacon before. So what the heck, let's give it a shot. I think the jowl bacon does really, really good in a pan. We can control the heat a little bit more evenly. So we don't make, we make sure uh, all, the, all the fat is kept intact. I've never grilled bacon at all, let alone uh, grilled back bacon. Mm -hmm. So I think it's gonna be great, but I also think it's, it was already the mildest. So maybe start there. Pure, the smoke, all the flavor points still hit the same. Wanna move on to some belly bacon? Sure. I like doing these in the oven, so that's the way we did it. That's, that's also why it's so flat. It's such an even heat, gives it an even cook. Doesn't curl up on you too much or anything like that. Please enjoy. More bacon? More bacon. That's still fantastic. That's amazing. Good pork, dry cure, nice long smoke, hits all of the points. I wouldn't want to change a thing for recipe development, cooking it, any of it, I never get sick of this bacon. It's never, it never goes bad. The fat and the sugars are caramelizing and there's just like this sweet pop from it. It's, that's so good. We cook these ones in the pan and you'll see like, I didn't put too much heat on them. I wanted like the fat here is the thing that's so good about the jowl. Right. We kept a lot of that fat going. So it's more fatty than maybe you were even anticipating. Fantastic. Thank you. I mean, it's an explosion of flavor. Yeah. Where this is like, I'd say 60% lean to 40% fat. This is like 80% fat yeah. to 20% lean. That is so freaking good. But that also that one bite was just about enough. I think, I think we should have this all the time. I think we have to sell it differently though than the regular belly bacon. Like, this is not to be used with your breakfast, with your eggs. This is not a BLT bacon. This is, take something that's already good, like your Brussels sprouts, and just add something else to them. Exactly. And it's gonna make a world of difference. Three incredibly different textures. Like, this is yeah. lean pork chop. The belly is exactly what you think. Little bit of meat, little bit of fat. This is a load of fat. All of them aim to do different things. How are you gonna use it? How are you gonna cook it? What are you gonna, what are you gonna eat it with? The Odyssey continues.